Hello, uh, this is Vidya Vati, Facility Technologist from MNCF, Centre for Nanoscience and Engineering Department, IAC. So now I would like to introduce you about the uh, particle size analysis and zeta potential measurement analysis and also give the uh, slight demonstration about the uh, experiments done. So this is the introduction to particle size and zeta potential measurement analysis. So let me start with particle size analysis. Uh, what is particle? Particle at its uh, basic level is, is nothing but the sub portion of uh, any substance. We come across in daily life uh, uh, particles in many uh, forms like granules, powders, suspensions, vaccines, milk itself is a suspension which has particles in it and mining muds, aerospace, aeros aerosols and sprays etc. Let's see why particle size is important. Particle size influences any, any process or any research field in a great way. For example, catalysts and tablets, the reactivity and dis the dissolution of the particles is very important. Okay? And this effectively happens when we, uh, when we have a particle size. A particle size uh, has a direct influence of many pro material properties such as reactivity. When it comes to catalysts and tablets, reactivity and dissolutions are very important. Also when it comes to sediments and planes, stability in suspension is very important. In the same way, when it comes to granules, when it comes to uh, grinding papers, its flowability and you know particles in its uh, uniform uh, size is very important. When it comes to ceramics, the particle density and porosity is mainly defined by the particle size. Also, particle size distribution. Let's see how particle size distribution is measured. In conventional way, there are several techniques like size analysis, sedimentation method and various uh, you know, microscopic imaging and then measuring the uh, image uh, particles in the images. Like sieve analysis, we, we at least need 100 to 200 grams of uh, material and we have different sets sieve uh, stack and when the sieve shaker is uh, performed shaking, uh, vibrating of the sieves, there is a different amount of uh, particles remaining on each sieve and taking the weight of uh, particles remain on each sieve, we come to know how much of the particles of what range is available in the uh, total fed, particle, uh, fed particles or powders. But now in this method, we are seeing in uh, the measurement in uh, DLS method, okay, dynamic light scattering method. And why, why DLS and what is DLS? Let me, let me say you why DLS because in DLS we need the sample very very in small quantities and it's a very invas non-invasive method and it is good for detecting trace amounts of aggregates and it's good for macromolecular sizing. So how dynamic light scattering works? When we take suspension of any particles and uh, pass the laser through the particles, the incident lasers light scatters. This is scattered intensities are recorded, measured by the uh, detectors and the change in this intensity is recorded to measure the, in turn measure the uh, particle size. In, uh, in further slides I will also uh, come to the principle how this particle size is measured. Okay, how the, uh, what is the principle behind uh, measurement of this particle size analysis by DLS techniques. As I said you the suspension uh, of particles, there comes the terminology Brownian motion. What is Brownian motion? Brownian motion is the random movement of particles due to the bombardment by the solvent molecules that surround them. The larger the particles, they move very slowly, the smaller they move further by, uh, uh, by the solvent molecules. So what is Brownian motion? Brownian motion is the random movement of particles due to the bombardment by the solvent molecules that surround them. The larger particles move slower, slowly and the finer particles move faster. The particle size, sample, the viscosity and temperature all influence the Brownian motion. So the velocity of Brownian motion is also defined by the property known as the translation diffusion coefficient. 
what does this mean translation diffusion coefficient is the one which is measured and this is the uh, uh, term uh, which is coming in stokes law you will understand that in the future formula okay the the velocity of brownian motion is defined by translation diffusion coefficient d the translation diffusion coefficient can be converted to particle size using stokes einstein equation so dh equal to kt by 3 pi uh, nu d is the equation so what is dh dh is nothing but the hydrodynamic diameter of the particles k is the boltzmann constant absolute temperature is t nu is the viscosity of the solvent and translation diffusion coefficient or the velocity of brownian motion which is captured is nothing but the d when we uh, when we uh, substitute all the uh, these uh, parameters we get the uh, particle size which is a hydrodynamic particle size what the, what is hydrodynamic uh, diameter i'll come in the next slide what is hydrodynamic uh, size the diameter of sphere that has the same translation diffusion coefficient as particle is called the hydrodynamic uh, radius you know when we come when we talk about particles particle size is one thing and one more entity associated with it is the particle shape all particles are not spherical so on, uh, also we know spherical particles are the only particles which have which can be defined with only one you know uh, one uh, parameter like diameter we can uh, solidly say but if particles are of uh, various different shapes it is not so easy to uh, measure so what uh, what conventions we have to use to uh, determine the particle size if they are having very irregular shapes so th that we will uh, see in this further so which uh, which sphere uh, makes the uh, meaningful one okay now i spoke about the uh, sphere uh, which is uh, which is having the uh, same diffusion coefficient that is the one which is taken convention which is taken for the dls measurement okay there are several conventions we can make like the center one what is uh, seen is the particle which is having irregular shape and there is a um, convention made on the maximum length parameter which is uh, having the sphere uh, which is having the sphere uh, diameter which is uh, equal to the maximum length of the uh, particle or we can also have a useful uh, uh, technique like sphere of same volume volume can also be taken as the uh, parameter or minimum length okay in this same way we are taking here in the dls measurement the average diffusion coefficient which is similar similar to the uh, irregular shaped particle in the uh, fed sample what are the factors affecting the hydrodynamic uh, diameter it is ionic strength of the diffusing medium any change to the surface of the particle non spherical particles as well so effect of ionic strength the ions in the medium and the total ionic concentration may affect the particle diffusion speed by changing the thickness of the electrical double layer called the debye length the low concentration um, medium will produce an extended double layer of ions around the particle reducing the diffusion speed and resulting in the larger or apparent hydro hydrodynamic diameter higher co ionic concentration media will compress the electric double layer and reduce the measured hydrodynamic diameter okay then surface structures an exot polymer layer projecting out into the medium will reduce the diffusion speed more than if the polymer is lying flat okay so any change on the surface that affects the change in the uh, speed or diffusion speed of the particle will give uh, will give the uh, different hydrodynamic size the nature of the surface and the polymer as well as the ionic concentration of the medium can affect the polymer con conformation which in turn can change the apparent size by several nanometers how does non, non spherical uh, particle affect the hydrodynamic size the particle if it is directly uh, very close to a sphere we can directly say the uh, size of this uh, diameter of the sphere as the size of the particle but if this uh, if the particle is so flat which is uh, seen in the picture its movement is uh, different in different directions so the average diffusion coefficient of this flat feature 
uh, of the uh, one particle which is equivalent to any sphere if it would have been a sphere and it is equal to this sphere's uh, translation diffusion coefficient that sphere's diameter is the uh, hydrodynamic diameter of this particle. Correlator. Correlator is uh, another part of uh, electro electronics in this machine which is a very important part and it is heart of the system. Correlator is basically a signal comparator. It is designed to measure the degree of similarity between two signals or one signal with itself at varying time intervals. If the intensity of signal is compared with itself at time 0, then two signals will be perfectly correlated. If we look at the signal at later time, the signal will have changed and this change will occur till and to some point where there end signal will not have any relevance to the initial original signal. So the time taken for this correlation to decay is the characteristic diffusion, characteristic of the diffusion speed and hence the size of the particles. So correlation function is one what determines during the uh, procedure uh, while measurements like how we are carrying, uh, how is the uh, measurement going like is it uh, going on successfully are the particles uh, uh, behaving in a required a random motion and so on. So for the larger particles the curve what we see is, uh, is in the top one okay and the down one is for smaller particles. The larger particles normally have the uh, very uh, slow movement okay and because of that uh, their, uh, the randomness is uh, comparatively less than the smaller particles and in this way the correlation function uh, reaches the uh, or, or you can say it decays slower than the smaller particles. Okay? So in this way we can uh, determine the uh, size of the particles as well, how it is going and what, what, it, what is our sample inferring. Okay, this is one of the result sheets what we uh, get after the analysis is done. This result sheet includes effective diameter, poly dispersity, baseline index and elapsed time. The entity we require which is useful for us we can take is the effective diameter, the mean of the effective diameter, okay, what is given in the column below. And poly dispersity index, what is poly dispersity index? It is, not, it is nothing but the measure of the broadness of the size distribution calculated from the cumulant analysis. It ranges from 0 to 1. In any case, while during, doing the measurements, if this crosses 1, that means the sample may not be suitable for measurement by uh, this dynamic light scattering. So, let us also see a little bit about sample requirements. Okay, The sample should consist of a dispersion of particles in a liquid medium. So, uh, the, the dispersant what we use for making the suspension of samples should be transparent, refractive index of it should be different from particles, Ri viscosity should be known with accuracy okay? uh, and it should be compatible with the particles like they should not they shouldn't react with particles, the solvent should not react with particles causing swelling or dissolution or aggregation. It should, it should be in a perfect suspension uh, in the solvent also having a Brownian motion. Okay? That is how we are having the name as dynamic light scattering because of the uh, scatter, scattered light which is detected from the uh, dynamic that is the movement of, due, uh, due to continuous movement of the particles. So now let us come to zeta potential. This machine has the capa capability to measure, measure zeta potential. So, let us now see what is zeta potential. Okay. The zeta potential reflects the potential difference between the electric double layer of electrophoretically mobile particles and the layer of dispersant around them at a slipping plane. When charged nanoparticles are dispersed in a liquid, a layer of ions of opposite charge strongly bound to their surface forming a charged thin layer known as the stern layer. The stern layer induces the formation of a second diffuse outer layer composed by 
loosely associated ions that is called diffusing ion layer these two layers are collectively called the electric electrical double layer when nanoparticles move in the liquid phase uh, due to the applied electric field there exists a boundary between the ions in the diffuse layer that move with the particle and ions that remain with the bulk dispersant the electrostatic potential at this slipping plane boundary is the zeta potential during zeta potential measurements an electric field is applied across the sample inducing the movement of charged particles the ratio between the nanoparticle velocity and the external applied field known as electrophoretic mobility is then measured and converted to the zeta potential using henry's equation let's also see what is henry's equation so first before that let's see what where zeta potential is important zeta potential is important in various fields like bio biomedical water purification minerals and ore flotation emulsions detergency paints you know electro electro deposition paper pharmaceuticals etc the zeta potential potential basically tells the stability of the particles in the suspension how, how we are measuring the zeta potential zeta potential cannot be measured directly and it is deduced from electrophoretic mobility of charged particles uh, when we apply the electric field okay so the electrophoresis what is electrophoresis it is the movement of charged particles relative to the liquid in the suspension under the influence of electric field the velocity of particles also depend on zeta potential field strength dielectric constant of medium and viscosity of the medium so here comes the henry's law okay so what we are actually doing in this is we are um, substituting for dielectric constant double layer thickness you know and viscosity and electric for electrophoretic mobility of the particles okay and in in uh, in term we are measuring the zeta potential by this equation so whatever uh, the, the zeta potential values we uh, acquire uh, how do you uh, you know categorize this uh, values and see what is the application of this one what is the usefulness of this one so it like we have the range from 0 to plus 3 then the uh, particles uh, tend to agglomerate or precipitate a bit strongly and if it is uh, above minus 30 and minus 40 it is like moderately stability and minus 41 to minus 60 is good stability uh, and minus 60 and minus 80 they are so good stable that whatever you do particles won't settle so your material or your suspension remains in that form for over a longer period of time so that is that defines the stability of the particles in your suspension so phase analysis light scattering zeta pulse is the instrument which is using this phase analysis light scattering technique what it, what it means is the mobility of particle is determined by measuring the phase difference between the beat frequency and the reference frequency the mean phase shift with time measures the electrophoretic mobility of the particles so these are the uh, zeta potential result sheets what we acquire is phase versus time is the graph this normally the system takes care of for measuring the uh, phase shift and in turn the uh, zeta potential okay and the below column uh, records the zeta potential the mean zeta potential what 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 is recorded over 3 or 4 runs is what is the zeta potential of that suspension which is introduced for measurement so what kind of samples uh, are good for zeta potential measurements samples should be mono dispersion size and they should uh, and they should uh, they are at high enough concentration to effectively scatter the uh, laser beam and have low salt concentrations and they are suspended in part, uh, particulate free or a polar dispersant example high purity water okay so this uh, this tells about the zeta potential now let's also have a demonstration of one or two samples thank you so now i will show 
how the particle size is measured by the system okay these are the cuvettes okay these are one, one centimeter by one centimeter square shape cuvettes these are uh, having the capacity of like 3.5 to 4 ml of the suspension so they uh, these are plastic cuvettes you can also use use glass cuvettes in case your solvents are uh, not water based and they and they are, uh, react with the uh, plastic then you can go for the uh, glass cuvettes so i have some uh, samples here which i'll show uh, zeta uh, potential as well for this also we will measure the particle size okay i will also show there uh, there is this is an electro electrode which has two uh, electrodes uh, attached inside okay we, uh, this is we are uh, we are supplying the electric field to this one when it is immersed in the uh, suspension okay so these are the cuvettes i'll be filling the cuvettes till the mark and then place in the uh, system let's open the software for particle size analysis so once the software is open this is the page opens so what you will do first is go to the file go to database and create your folder if it is already there then look into the search for the folder if not then create a folder so i'll double click and choose this this file so now we, do, we this is a new file there are no any measurements here okay and at this stage we exit this we have entered the file and we exited now next step is parameters go to parameters you enter the sample id whatever it may be like ab whatever or your your relevant sample name okay and what is important is here runs normally five runs are taken okay the temperature is 25 degrees no need to change in that so liquids this is one of the thing which we can uh, choose if we have water based uh, solvents we can directly take this if you have any other solvents like ethanol methanol toluene or any other solvents like this you can choose from the list and if you don't know what it is or if you are having two to three solvent mixed uh, so solvent then you can go for unspecified provided you know the other properties which need to be fed in the system so now i have this uh, sample with water based suspension so i have chosen water so uh, no need to change this angle okay what you are going to see is the time so time you can choose either 30 seconds or 1 minute so normally uh, uh, 30 seconds or 1 minute you can take in case your uh, samples are having uh, you know are very uh, unstable particles then you can reduce the time okay so that you will uh, uh, record the readings before the particles settle down and then uh, you are going to choose the uniform spheres over here as i mentioned in the slides uh, uniform spheres and the uh, convention that is made in stokes einstein equation is the spheres that has a uh, e equivalent of uh, translation diffusion coefficient okay the test cut off is kept at 30 nothing to change and then uh, uh, save the results automatically every time you do the measurement and say okay okay and now i'm going to place the sample in the sample uh, placing compartment of the system so once you fill the cuvette with your sample just see that it is completely dry so wipe all the faces uh, using the tissue and try to hold the cuvette only along the edges so that your finger marks don't come on the surface of the cuvettes so uh, that uh, wiping so so once you uh, place the sample in the uh, cuvettes wipe the cuvette for all the uh, sides also see to it that there are no air bubbles inside the uh, uh, cuvettes and after wiping place it in the sample holder here and close this and close the slide the closer so once the sample is placed in the sample holder compartment now uh, we already have fed the all the parameters for this uh, particular sample 
so now what we are going to do is just start the run there is a start icon here just click on start so wait till the uh, system optimizes and now so this is the correlation function what i uh, explained earlier this uh, correlation function has to decay and uh, form a, a curve of the kind what you are seeing on the screen okay so now we have three different curves which we can uh, record like log normal distribution multimodal size distribution as well as the correlation function these two are for, taken for analysis and correlation function is what uh, software utilizes for the measurement of particle sizes okay let's wait for all the five readings to complete and then the mean of this whatever is uh, appearing here in this uh, sheet is your particle size so this suspension has particles of about uh, 90 92 95 nanometers and uh, readings are quite consistent so minimum 3 3 readings to be taken so we can three, take 3 or uh, the 5 numbers of readings to get a good statistics okay so the readings are completed so now i will show you how we get the Hmm. A result sheet of this uh, readings okay so what are recorded are the log normal distribution as well as the multimodal size distribution okay so let's see how to uh, see the result sheet when we go to the file again open this uh, data sheet which is just now measure and then say print print report So, this is your useful data sheet, okay, where you are having effective diameter of 92.1, okay, the mean of which is 92.7, uh, polydispersity and baseline index are also given, okay, this is your data sheet and here appears the all parameters which we have fed in the parameter uh, window just before doing the, starting the experiment. So here is one sample for which zeta potential is to be measured. This is an electrode. This is the sample in the cuvette. Situated it that there are no bubbles in the suspension. And now uh, insert the electrode into the suspension in the cuvette. Okay. Whatever extra comes can spill on the uh, tissue and then wipe it out dry with a uh, tissue. Just wipe it and take a take a dry one to the system. Okay. Okay. And now we will place this into the system for measuring the potential. We have now finished particle size measurement. So uh, now we are going to zeta potential measurements. In this system, we need to do one at a time. So we have closed the particle size uh, software, and now we are opening the as it a potential analyzer okay this is how the screen appears when you open the software and then uh, i will show the uh, sample placement in the instrument so this is the sample how i have inserted the uh, electrode into the system there is an uh, wire and fix the wire if i make the connections and carefully insert in the sample holder and slide the door to close and now coming back to the uh, software we are again first going to create our folder by clicking on the file database and a folder or if it is already there you can search for so i i am looking for a cdna folder Yeah.
so this is the cdna uh, folder this step is also very important if you don't choose your folder properly or if you don't make uh, enter this folder then you you will not know in which folder your uh, data is going to be saved after the uh, analysis then you will have to look for uh, that so better make a uh, folder and then enter the folder by clicking twice on the same folder okay now we have entered this cdna folder so my data will be recorded in the uh, same folder okay now exit this one so now again we have to go to the parameters and we have to feed the uh, sample name so i will give it as a sample a okay sample uh, name and if you have any notes to, uh, towards the sample you can uh, write over here okay and the sample runs can be like 3 and above so i am going to keep it 3 here and cycles can be like 10 or up to 15 you can choose i am going to choose 10 cycles and uh, same way so here there are two models which you need to uh, choose for water based solvents normally smolchowski model has to be selected and if your uh, uh, solvents are non uh, polar or organic solvents like uh, uh, light weak acids or anything of that kind you can choose huckel method so water based solvents we need to choose smolchowski i have chosen water as the solvent so i am choosing smolchowski model and then temperature need not be changed liquid water or any other ones if you have you can choose that but now i have used as water so let's go for water okay and uh, in case you are having any unspecified solvent that option also is there unspecified in that case you can uh, uh, manually feed the viscosity refractive index and uh, dielectric constant of that uh, solvent also the ph or if you already uh, have the uh, solvent which is in this list you can just choose and all other things are fed and uh, particle size you would have already measured in the uh, earlier uh, uh, stage where particle size i found uh, was something around 90 or for this particular particle uh, for this uh, solvent the particle size is something around uh, 330 what i already know so feed that and save auto save results and click okay so the parameters are ready and now click start to record the potential readings this will take a little while uh, so that the optimization is completed just wait without bypassing the system and then you can record the uh, readings so here the curve you see is phase versus time the black line what you see is the reference one and uh, the, the dotted red one is the one pertaining to the sample so runs are completed here is your uh, zeta potential the mean zeta potential is what is the potential for this particular sample and we need to record the result sheet as well so for that we will go to the file again and go to print report and this sheet is your uh, result sheet where you are having the phase versus time curve and all the parameters that you have fed as well as the column where you are seeing the mean zeta potential which is the uh, useful entity which we wanted to measure in this system so this is how we have measured the uh, particle sizes as well as the zeta potential which are the two uh, important entities related to the particles so thank you for your attention